Here's John and Coach John Garrett. Coach, uh, so much during the week has been made about this matchup with you and your good friend Bob Serres. Can you share with us uh, what you guys exchanged at uh, midfield just now? Well, I've known Bob a long time. I've been in huddles with him uh, and uh, worked together on the same staff and then uh, obviously always have stayed in touch with him uh, when he became the coach because that is where I went to school. So we've shared a lot of memories. And uh, I just told him I love him. He's got a really good team. And... Uh, I just encouraged them to go win the Ivy League title because they got a real shot to do it. Well, they sure did serve notice to us. Uh, they, they were a tough matchup. But, you know, Coach, from last week to this week, we heard you talk uh, during the Tuesday press conference that uh, what you're looking for, it's a process, and the last thing is the product. Uh, talk about some of the building blocks. I, it, there was a lot of excitement around this game today. The score might not reflect it, but I think there were some building blocks. What do you think? Well, a lot of positives. Uh, they kept fighting. They competed to the end, offense and defense. Defense really responded much better in the second half than previous games, so that was really, really good. Uh, and then we'll look at the details of the play, but ultimately we got to execute better. One step at a time next week, Holy Cross, first Patriot League game. Good luck up there, Coach. Thank you very much, John. Have a good night. You too. Gary Michael, back to you guys. All right, John, thank you very much. We're going to call for a timeout. John will be back with Phil Ng, but we've got highlights coming your way right after this break. 38-17 is the final here this evening. Let's take a look at the post-game show as it is brought to you by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. And here's Mike with the highlights. Well, in that first half, this was a tight game right away. And you can see Kanoff, he was 31 for 41, did throw two interceptions, but you can see the trickery down below. And Jerry Poe played a nice game, nice tackle there to keep them to a field goal. And that was that 3-0 lead right away. Rice Tavish hits it and then Again, I think Lafayette is a positive they showed. C.J. Emil to be able to bounce it to the outside. Deshaun Brown, he ended up with close to 50 yards. This was a touchdown by Dylan Wadsworth. That Lafayette takes the lead 7-3 to three at that point. That was the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Chad Knopf kind of took off things, and uh, Parkinson, he ended up with four catches for 42 yards. Big wide receivers, I think, made a big difference in this football game against some of the smaller Lafayette corners, but Lafayette did battle. They turned the ball over three times. This one picked up by Demetrius Breedlove, and that's going to lead to a quarterback drawdown inside the five-yard line. Sean O'Malley almost gets that in, and then the freshman kicker, Gordon Brock, he ends up tying this game at 10 apiece. The long return right here by Tiger Besh got this ball out over the 50-yard line. This was right after Lafayette had tied the game, kind of a backbreaker, and then they took off here. Chad Volker did a great job. Charlie Volker ended up with 111 yards on 20 carries. Charlie Volker, again, did not play that first game, so you know they had a, a good feeling to get him back. He's backed up by a guy named Ryan Quigley. Ryan Quigley ended up with a couple touchdowns himself. So that running back stable that they have, and you see Quigley right here taking it down the field, getting down inside the 10-yard line. A couple plays later, they're going to set up first and goal with the one. Ryan Quigley, he's going to bang it in. At that point, it was 17-10. to 10. They got the football back. Here's an interception by uh, Brandon Bryant, so that's the second turnover. And then they took the ball right back, and you see the little trick play. Princeton always known for their trick plays, the big wide receivers. Philip Parham going against really all day, guys that were 6'4 and 6'5. And that was a fade. Here's a big play for Lafayette, the home run hitter down the field there. Joey Chenoweth takes it 71 yards for the touchdown. That cut it from 38 to 10 to 38 to 17. That's a 71 yard touchdown. More pressure from Lafayette. This bounces out of Knopf's hands into the hands of Jerry Poe. And then this last throw right here again, the fake spike probably should have ended up in the third row. The freshman throws it into traffic. And the other freshman on the other side, C.J. Wall, he'll pick it off. But a little bit too, a couple too many mistakes for Lafayette here. But the progress is there. I thought they did better offensively. And like John alluded to, John Garrett played better defensively in the second half and got a couple stops. Winning or losing becomes a little bit more important next Saturday night or Saturday afternoon. We'll be there. Join us in Worcester, Massachusetts. He's Mike Joseph. Thanks to John Bowman. I'm Gary Laubach. And now John and Phil Ng will finish things up. Yes, sir, Gary. Uh, first of all, for those of you paying attention at halftime, it's my mistake. Of course, Phil Ling is here. I think I made the mistake of calling you Mike Joseph twice. Now, the distinction couldn't be more uh, more extreme, of course. Uh, Mike was a defensive back. Phil was a wide receiver. Uh, um, uh, Phil was probably a dean's list student, uh, dean list student. Mike, not so much. And of course, Phil has a, a full head of beautiful wavy brown hair. Michael, not so much. That said, let's get back to football. And Phil, I think that uh, uh, the consensus is after that 
difficult week last week down at Villanova. John Garrett was looking for something to hang his hat on, something that he could build upon with his football team. Your impressions? Well, uh, you know, it was a tough game, you know, and um, I think, you know, uh, on the field you can – for the players and the coaches, you can not only see the frustration, but you can feel it. Um, that being said, you know, there are a few bright spots. You know, uh, came out, you see the maturation of Sean O'Malley, um, still has a way to go, uh, but some really nice passes. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's going to get that, that thing to click a little bit better as we go forward. Um, but still, it's, 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 again, comes back to our main key to the game, which is the man in the mirror, looking yourself in, and then what are you going to do from here on out? Uh, are you going to play hard? You know, and, and that's, that's really it. I, I saw John Garrett uh, talk to a couple of his kids on the way out. After the alma mater has played right before our post-game interview, especially uh, Dylan Wadsworth was one, uh, uh, McDonnelly was another, uh, and he pointed out individual kids, and he's looking for that individual effort no matter what the score, no matter what the time of the game, and I think he saw some of that tonight. I think you do, and then what you got to do is you got to point that out to the other kids who aren't doing that. Um, because that's what it's going to take, you know. Uh, it's unfortunately this team is not good enough on its own to overcome some of those, uh, you know, those obstacles. Um, but if you can get everyone buying in, selling out, um, and then we have a couple breaks go our way that's when you're going to see something happen. Phil, I also heard you and Mike Joseph. Uh, of course, Mike Joseph is in my ear. I stand next to you on the sideline. And from an X and O standpoint, you know, and uh, you know, obviously the emotional, the, the, uh, the attitude part is, is the first building block. But in this offensive system, you see what could be. I'm not sure that John Garrett, the coach, has had a chance to get his pieces in place yet, yeah, but absolutely. you can see certain things, whether they be pass patterns, misdirection plays, a little more screen, getting uh, the tight end involved again. You can see where John Garrett wants this offense to go. And that, and that's absolutely it. You know, you have, like we said, we have glimpses. You know, we have a couple good drives. Um, but then, you know, you come across those, you know, turnovers or, you know, again, you have a you have a freshman quarterback in Sean O'Malley who's going to make some mistakes. Um, a lot of good plays, but, you know, there's a couple ones that, you know, you just can't have. When you're at this stage in development, the margin for error is wafer, wafer thin. Uh, Lafayette's not there yet. They're getting there. A big, big game next week as they open up the Patriot League season up in Worcester against Holy Cross and their talented quarterback, Mike Pujols. Uh, that will do it for us next week. We hope you'll be back with us on the Lafayette Sports Network. Mike Joseph will be there. Gary Laubach will be there. I'll be there on the sideline. Phil, we'll see you in two weeks. In the meantime, thank you for joining us on the Lafayette Sports Network. Good night, everybody. <laughs>